Hello everyone. Today I'm starting this video series for the people who are very new to the CFD and I'm expecting that uh, you have taken a first course in CFD and you know some basics of CFD and you want to take the next step and uh, you want to try some softwares or you want to try your hands on programming. So I just have some t examples for you that you can practice over some softwares as in our case we are dealing with ANSYS and later in the series we'll see how we can write your own codes for those kind of problems so today in this video I'll, I want to talk about a very classical steady flow example which is called as the lid driven cavity and in this example we have a square domain in this case it's two-dimensional and uh, we have these four walls out of which we have one as the moving wall and the three are the stationary ones so usually it's a very simple problem which is very easy in ANSYS and uh, in the next video we'll also talk about how we can write a code to solve the Navier-Stokes equation for this kind of flow so let's just jump right in so in the ANSYS you will just double click the fluent option and in the fluent we have these modules within fluent so of course first we have to start with the geometry of the flow and uh, I'm just using the default software uh, called as the design modeler you can import some of your existing geometries but because this is a very simple geometry so I just make it quickly for you sketching take a rectangle I'll make it as a square so just hit the dimension and put it as a 1 by 1 meter of square so there I get it now I just use the surface from sketches feature which will turn this whole surface uh, turn this whole sketch into a surface and I'll choose the sketch 1 and generate so I have my surface and in the surface body I'll say that it is actually gonna be uh, fluid so that's all for the design modeler the second part would be to mesh it so this is actually the basic workflow of solving a fluid dynamics problem in fluent that first you create the design you specify which part is the solid which is the fluid the, the kind of domains and then you mesh the entire geometry so this would be the second part where we would define what kind of mesh are we looking for like in some cases uh, we would want some kind of unstructured meshes and some kind of structured cylindrical Cartesian there are a lot of meshes so in this case as you will see that our geometry is very simple so we can simply go for the direct meshing so I'll just click generate mesh and here we go can click on the mesh and you can see the mesh so since it's uh, very coarse so I'll just go here and in the sizing option I say from coarse to the fine and I'll update my mesh so the basic concept is if your mesh is very coarse the solution that you want to obtain it won't be very accurate but you might still get it but because it's a very simple problem so having a fine mesh would be even better so in my perspective I could make it even finer so I right click here and insert a refinement and in the refinement I select this geometry and update so the only purpose behind refinement is to get an accurate solution and I think it's uh, quite refined here and as you can see it's a very simple mesh a Cartesian mesh and a very structured and uh, uh, for ANSYS we need to define the boundary conditions so because we have to select the boundary on which we want to apply the boundary condition so this wall is going to be the moving one as you remember so I'll just call it as the moving wall and the other three they are going to be stationary so I'll select them using the control key and I'll name them as the stationary walls so in the name selection or the naming you can see the moving wall and the three stationary walls and this is the final mesh and that's all for the meshing and I'll just update the mesh because I put on the name and I did not update so ANSYS will not consider that as an update so I have to do that manually so 
now I can right away enter into the setup and uh, as you can see the dimension it's 2d because my geometry is 2d so ANSYS can uh, define and uh, detect automatically whether it's a two-dimensional case and uh, there we go and if, uh, the fluent solver it's uh, the most important part where we define all the properties all the conditions so right away in the time we have steady versus transient so I'll just hit the steady case and I want to uh, take the gravity here and uh, in the uh, models there are a lot of options that are there for selecting the appropriate flow case so in this one I will go with the laminar flow with the no energy equation and uh, in the material I'll say that uh, the fluid under consideration it's uh, water so let be and then in the cell zone condition we have to define which zone is of which material so uh, the surface body is the green one that you can see here so I want here to be water so I'll just go edit and change from air to water because the air is the default material for ANSYS or the default fluid rather in the boundary condition for the moving wall I'll say uh, in the momentum the default option is the stationary so I'll change it to moving and the translational velocity in the positive x direction and I'll change it to some small velocity to just cross check my results and the stationary wall I'll just cross check and it is a stationary so that's it in the solution method we have the simple method which is very popular and I am pretty sure that uh, your teacher might have told you about this and I'll just go check the solution controls these are the under relaxation parameters so we play with these parameters when our solution diverge but let's see and I hope that uh, in this case it won't so in the initialization process I'll just initialize it and in the run calculation I'll say I want to run it for 500 and uh, it might take some time to converge the solution so let's see how it goes for this because our mesh is not very fine I mean not too fine and uh, the case is very simple the mesh is two-dimensional structured that is why the calculations are quite fast and uh, if your case is very complex so even for one iteration it, it might take a huge time it all depends on the complexity of your problem so as you can see uh, these are the plots for the residuals and they are going down 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 so there is a convergence criteria that if all my residuals are below a particular level and this will call it as a converged solution so you can see that even in 500 I didn't get a converged solution so I'll go even further to check like how much time it's, it's gonna take to get me a converged solution so the calculations are on and I think uh, it, it's just gonna take a while because for this case the convergence criteria for the continuity equation is uh, the 10 to the power minus 4 so I think it's gonna be there soon and uh, x velocity and y velocity they are already very small so yeah we got the 10 to the power minus 4 the solution is converged here and the calculation is complete so let's see what I have in results so we have this uh, ANSYS post processing to check and uh, to visualize the results which is actually quite effective and uh, there are also we, have, we also got some options to export our result but we won't be dealing with that in this case so this is my domain and I'll just check uh, say streamlines because this might be the term that you are familiar with so I'll just go for the surface streamline because we don't have a 3d geometry really so the surface that I want to select is this one so I'll go for the symmetry one or two they are just the same just the other way down and I'll just uh, change I'll just not change the parameters and put apply and there you go so as you can see this is like uh, the streamline pattern of this kind of flow that we have a big vortex over here and we also have these small vortex which would actually be more clear if I increase the number of points yeah so you can see that we have a big vortex over here and two small vortexes in there so 
this is the main feature of the driven cavity flow that there is the production of some kind of vortex inside the cavity and uh, this kind of flow to check your solution there are a lot of experimental as well as numerical solutions against which you can validate your results in this case we're not going to be doing that i particularly do that kind of comparison when i write my own codes but i i'm assuming that since ansys is already a very valid commercial software so it it won't be wrong if you are doing it the correct way and uh, there is no problem in doing it this way so this would be probably correct and to check the other parameters you can go for the contours you can see how are the contours for some variables on this in, in this domain so you can see this is the pressure and you have some strange things on the corner that is why because on this corner the velocity changes from 1 to 0 on both of the corners so that is why we have this singularity on the corners and for the velocity we have rather to see velocity in the x and the y direction separately so using the contour you can check out uh, the velocity and the pressure and in some cases you can also check the veloc uh, the value of vorticity which you can define and if this case had been with temperature so you can also select uh, you can also see the contours for the temperature and uh, yeah this would be all for this particular case and in some next videos we will also be talking about how i can write a very simple program using some very basic solvers uh, to simulate the same kind of flow situation and this is a very simple test case and if you are not into cfd at all and you you're willing to come into cfd i think this would be a very good uh, test for you to start into the world of cfd and you can also try to compare your results and uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe to my channel that's all for today thank you